Salam alaikum and good afternoon to you all or good morning or good evening wherever you are in the world. Thank you for subscribing. Um, if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscription button below and press the notification button and then you'll receive my videos as and when I make them and they come in. So Amanda goes back to basics. I'm telling you my story as to why I became a Muslim. It is a very long, intricate story. It talks about all the different events that were happening throughout my life, from birth all the way up to when I took my Shahada, uh, around the age of about 48, I think I was. So um, put your kettle on, get yourself a cup of tea, and hop on board, let's go. So my story in the last video, um, I was talking about the time um, around my 30s, um, when I had started the relationship with uh, the father of, of my children, we'd had two the daughters and I'd met the, their father when I was at school. Um, so we've been together in this part of the story for a very long time. <laughs> and um, I was at that point where I felt like I was grasping at things and I hadn't found my place. I didn't know where I belonged. Um, and it was affecting my work as well. I was a little bit aggressive in my approach to things and um, I was just struggling to find the peace and satisfaction in my heart. Um, I decided to um, try and revive my um, career, my teaching. I wanted to travel. Um, I'd always wanted to travel and Allah had given me that in my blood to want to get out there and seek and find the world because you'll later find out that when I travelled, that's when Islam truly did come to me. Um, so uh, I wanted to travel. I decided to travel to, um, to Spain and try and make a life in Spain for myself and the family. Um, uh, my partner at the time, husband, uh, we hadn't married at that point, remember? Uh, he didn't want to come, he felt that it was better to stay at uh, in London and so the children and I travelled and he was coming out to visit us um, over short periods of time. Um, this was, this was a, a point where um, I realised actually I could survive along, alone and by myself because I was alone and this was the first time I was alone actually uh, because I'd been uh, with their father since I was 16 and I had never had that time to explore me and I was able to start to explore me so this was quite a, a good point in my life to to feel a sense of yeah you can do this to build up my love for myself and my confidence uh, but <laughs> Unfortunately, and there's many unfortunately's along my journey, uh, the trial and the tribulation of being a part uh, in the relationship, it just wasn't being, um, I wasn't, I wasn't being fulfilled. I wasn't happy in the job. Um, I was very un unhappy with being away from the, the their father. The children needed to be with their dad. And... Um, the, the job didn't just didn't work out it just wasn't it just wasn't the job for me so again I'm grasping I'm grabbing I'm trying to run away and find something bigger and better than me and I thought that was going to Spain and having a career and a life in Spain but that wasn't to be all it did was um, add a uh, another chip upon my shoulder and into the relationship um, Anyway, so uh, I got back to London and I tried to pick myself back up again and get back onto the career, uh, feeling that if I put my energy into teaching and, and developing my career, then um, I'll get that satisfaction and that love and that peace in my heart. But I wasn't looking at myself. I wasn't doing my reflections, I wasn't doing my uh, remembrance and, and, and being grateful and thinking of something bigger and better than me. I was just thinking of myself and my, and my weak weakness and, and, and my needs. And um, verily in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest. And that's what I wasn't doing. So I never did find the rest in my heart. And um, I've learned that... Um, no materialistic like stuff 
uh, can equal such intrinsic rewards. So that to, to naturally feel a sense of belonging, that's that feeling, that natural kind of intrinsic reward of feeling belonging when you search for something outside of you, not materialistically, but spiritually. And I can guarantee you, you're going to find happiness. That's just as what I did. So, so kind of sift through, yeah, all of the stuff that's in your life, all of the external things, okay, that we can touch and grab. It really is just nothing. And what really is going to make you very peaceful is that connection in your heart, that spiritual development. Um, so, again, I thought that what's going to make me happy would be, let's get married. You know, we've been together now for over 20 years and um, I wanted to be married. I wanted to be in a unit, always wanted that, always felt that there was a partner out there for me and uh, Allah made us in pairs, remember, so there's always a pair out there. Um, and I just hadn't found, found that, that pair for me, um, that partner for me. Uh, it sounded like a bit of fruit, didn't it? That pair. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so we got married and um, again, I was grabbing. I was unhappy. Uh, I hadn't found the internal peace. And of course, the marriage, it didn't, it didn't work out and it did dissolve. And that is going to be very critical in my story. So I am now at a point where I'm about, uh, I think I'm about 42, 43 in my story now where I've been married, it didn't work, um, and it's at a critical point in my story, and I am going to stop it right there. I think I've said enough again today, and um, I'll leave you there, and I'm gonna work on part nine of my story, because I start to travel, and I leave the country, um, and I'm not gonna tell you where I go. So I'm gonna see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share this video around with all your friends. I'm absolutely okay with that. And see you next time. Take care. Lots of love. Keep smiling and look after that beautiful light in your heart. See you later. See you in the next one. And masalama.